Yes, it's the Fuji show starring the GFX 100. 100. GFX 100. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second live stream and our very first GFX live stream. Tonight, the wonderful Warwick Williams will present to you the GFX 100. You may know that new firmware updates were released, and we're going to go over the details of these as well. My name is Neil Pash, Digital Communications and Support Specialist. I'll be fielding some questions after the short presentation. Uh, we will be running for about 30 or 40 minutes tops tonight, so a little bit uh, punchier than, than last time's XT4, where we went over an hour quite easily. Due to public demand. Due to public demand, that's right. Um, behind the camera, mics and lighting equipment, which is extremely impressive this time as well, um, is Will Amlazark, Field Technical and Sales Support. Your lovely host for this evening is the one and only Warwick Williams, National Training Manager. Over to you, Was. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, yeah, it's uh, great to be back and great to be doing something with the uh, GFX cameras as well. Uh, I've got my trusty 50S. 50R all here, and uh, I, this 50S has been a lot of places, had this uh, many countries around the world in a lot of different situations, so very trusty camera. But of course, the camera that everyone seems to ask about is this, the 100, I've got that here as well. I will be talking about these in brief, talking about the new firmware upgrade and uh, then showing a few uh, samples of what you can get out of the, the GFX cameras before we entertain your questions. So let's uh, commence the short presentation. The GFX range. Well, briefly, it's a medium format mirrorless design using our large format digital sensor uh, with high performance image processing and of course, high quality lenses designed to match the sensor. And the lenses, the lens range in fact, has expanded quite well. So we have lenses right from the 23 millimeters through to the 250 mil and three zoom lenses as well. Uh, there are a few uh, accessories, extension tubes and adapters and even a teleconverter well for the 250 and the GF uh, 100 to 200. The, the lenses we've been talking about are, suits our focal plane system, but uh, you can actually use alternative lenses via the adapter, and there's a range of Fujinon HC and Hasselblad HC lenses that will actually work quite successfully on here. These are leaf shutter lenses, so that, of course, ups your uh, flashing speed to 800th of a second from 125th. But it's the image quality, I think, that really defines the GFX system. They do offer overwhelmingly high image quality. And the quality is comparable to that of uh, large format film. And you know, Fujifilm knows a lot about that. To me, though, the most important feature is the fact that you get such wonderful micro transition detail. And this is the sort of detail you can't get from anything. Even full frames can't deliver this sort of uh, detail. Micro transition detail is the ability to capture very, very small, extremely small little shadows and details that actually allows your brain to interpret 3D. And uh, that's why the pictures from these cameras look so realistic. The 50S and the 50R, uh, aside from their physical differences, are pretty similar. They both use the 51.4 megapixel sensor and they have very fast startup, 0.4 of a second. You've got a wide range of shutter speeds from 60 minutes right to 1 16,000th of a second. Uh, a good focus area with 117 points, or you can dial that up to 425 if you so desire. Uh, nice ISO range. Uh, and a numer a numerous other features you often don't find on medium format cameras. They perform much faster than a traditional medium format style camera. There are some physical features pertinent to the 50S. Uh, it has a three-way tilt touch screen. Uh, the, the magnification of the eyepiece is 0.85 times. The viewfinder is detachable and there's actually an interchangeable eye cup on these. You use USB 2 on this one. And certainly it was an earlier camera, hence why we don't have USB-C on this one. Uh, it does have built-in Wi-Fi, but no Bluetooth. There is an optional battery grip, so you can add another battery in there and that extends your shooting range and also provides nice vertical controls as well. 
The 50R is a different design, more of the rangefinder style, and uh, it has a two-way tilt touch screen. The EVF magnification is not quite as much, down at 0.77 times. It has a fixed viewfinder, fixed eye cup, USB-C connector. It has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and weighs a little bit less than the GFX 50S. But of course, the one that uh, everyone loves to see and talk about, the GFX 100, with its 102 megapixel backside illuminated large format digital sensor, five axis IBIS, so in-body image stabilization, performing up to 10,000 adjustments per second. It's a hybrid phase detection autofocus system with 100% coverage, so very fast for focus. It also has 4K, 30 frames per second, 422 10-bit movie recording capability. And that's been expanded by the firmware too. But we'll talk about that a bit more in a sec. There's a 5.76 million dot resolution detachable EVF. And there's a few other features. There's a whole lot of features. In fact, I can't go through them all, but you have know, 16-bit sensor, ISO from 100 to 12,800, and you can pull that down to 50 or push it up to 102,400. Surprising clarity, actually, even at that level. It'll shoot up five frames per second continuous. It's fully weather resistant. In fact, the whole GFX system, every camera and every component is weather resistant. Uh, it now has 18 film simulations, courtesy of the new firmware. There's that nice smooth shutter release system that uh, was originally developed on our X-H1 camera. The smooth skin effect appeared in this one to reduce roughness in skin detail for your JPEG files. And of course, it has some other physical features like the three-way tilt touch screen. The uh, magnification on this one is 0.86 times. This is a huge uh, uh, viewing area in the eyepiece. Detachable EVF viewfinder, interchangeable eye cup, USB-C connector, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and an inbuilt dual battery grip. So you actually run the camera with two batteries. Uh, it's relatively light for a camera of this nature and very easy to use. The autofocus system has 3.76 million phase detection pixels with 100% sensor coverage. Uh, it's by, via the firmware or the new firmware, it's had its low light focus performance improved, so down to minus five EV, it's extremely good. Tracking autofocus is improved. Face detection with eye preference, uh, face detection does actually operate down to a very small percentage of the actual sensor area, 7% of the picture size. And face selection, you can uh, leave it up to the camera. You can even override it by the touch panel or using the focus lever. The construction is very solid. Uh, an interlocking magnesium alloy shell construction. And of course, a lot of weather sealing in here. The body has 76 sealing points and the EVS has 19. So it's, it's gonna work very well, even in the rain, uh, snow, sleet, dust, and I've tried it, yeah. Size, now this is what may surprise you. Well, obviously, uh, medium format cameras are usually quite large. And yes, it's certainly larger than our X series, but uh, you know, Fujifilm likes to change things a little bit. So it's a medium format camera that is in fact smaller than uh, some of the major uh, full frame SLRs on the market and lighter as well. I don't see anything more there. You can even, sorry to interrupt, you yeah. can even remove the viewfinder. Well, if you want to make it even lighter again, yes. So, newsflash, new firmware. What do you get? Well, for the 50S and the 50R, you get new film simulation. So there's the classic NEG and the Eterna film sim simulation, bringing their total up to 17 film simulations. Focus bracketing now has an auto mode. The photo rating has expanded compatibility with other software. We've also expanded the folder capacity uh, capability from 999 to 9,999. Smooth skin effect has been added. Uh, that's something they've got from the uh, GFX 100. Improved autofocus in low light, improved face and eye detection. And for the GFX 100, it gets classic neg and the new Eterna Bleach Bypass, something that just appeared with the X-T4. That gives the GFX 100 18 film simulation modes. Focus bracketing uh, has uh, improved by having the auto mode added. Photo rating, again, like the uh, 50S and the 50R, has had its uh, compatibility expanded. We've had the same expanded folder capability and compressed RAW has been added to this one. Uh, we've expanded the grain of fret control, given even more control over that. And the have added the gimbal drone controlled by USB. 
And of course, something that has really caused a stir that you have added 4K Pro Raw Res. And I'd have to say, I, I'm, I'm amazed in the short time that firmware has been out, how many inquiries we've had from people in the movie industry now wanting to try this particular camera. So I said, why medium format? And one thing is resolution. And as I've mentioned before, for my money, it's micro transition. But what does that really mean when you're using a micro, uh, a medium format camera? Uh, well, one thing I really like about the GX, GFX system is while it's a medium format camera, it's not tied to the studio. Now, believe me, any of the GFX cameras would be quite at home in the studio, in particular the, the 50S and the GFX 100 with their uh, ability to put the tilt adapter on the viewfinder. But any of them are quite at home in the studio. They're also totally at home out of the studio, and we've done this before. So whether you use JPEG, whether you use uh, RAW files, whether you shoot indoors, outdoors, travel photography, uh, portrait, landscape, anything, these cameras suit them perfectly. They work so well. I can certainly attest to that. That picture there is actually me. I took uh, the 50S over to Jordan, and that was the day in Petra, which was pretty phenomenal. Another picture from Petra. Uh, I was amazed to find that the cameras actually perform quite well, even on moving targets. And uh, uh, there's absolutely no issue, even before the firmware upgrade. And I think actually recording moving subject matter with these medium format cameras. Low light, of course, they're fantastic for low light. And uh, this is going up the Grand Canal in Venice in the morning. And this, even with the uh, 3264 zoom lens, the, uh, it's just so easy to shoot wonderful pictures. And these ones are, so far, all JPEG straight out of the camera. The camera is so easy to use, you can just put it in auto mode, hand it to someone, and you can use it as a happy snapper. There's no problem at all. But at the same time, you can get the incredible micro transition detail, beautiful skin tones, and the depths to the pictures that it's so easy to capture with these particular cameras. The pictures here were shot with the uh, 50R, and I did uh, a trip through Papua New Guinea, and it was one of the few times it actually wasn't raining, and I mean, it rained heavy. Uh, so here's a, one of the main roads we were traveling along, uh, pretty washed out and pretty heavy. Now, if you are going to do some travel photography, uh, it's worthwhile having these cameras. I mean, you, if you've seen, uh, seen the ability of these cameras to produce such wonderful images, I mean, again, here we have a JPEG, the depth in the clouds is quite extraordinary, the, the color range. But as I said, if you want to shoot in the studio and shoot raw, yeah, that's possible as well. So this is a, a, a photo session we did at a Mercedes dealership over in Perth, and very easy to set this up. Uh, this was actually done handheld. Uh, yes, we had uh, studio lights, it's all uh, shot with uh, uh, and processed through Capture One. But I thought, uh, since uh, those all are pre-firmware um, upgrade pictures, I thought what I should do is actually go and take some photos with these cameras post-firmware upgrade. Now, I happened to hear that there was a quite a substantial pod of whales swimming past uh, the central coast, so I thought I might just drive up to Boat Harbour and take some photos. What I didn't realise is uh, the whales were still quite a long way out to sea. But I had the 250mm lens and the GFX100 and was able to capture this. Although, yeah, that little thing there is still a whale. However, GFX100, you can crop substantially. And there's still, that is a pretty decent crop and it's just over four megapixels. So, you know, uh, it's probably not going to win any science awards, but uh, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, unfortunately, the whales wouldn't come any closer. So I did what I could. But uh, the ability to zoom and crop on the 100 is just staggering. Uh, on top of that, it is possible to use the continuous mode. And this is actually uh, just six shots that I shot uh, at five frames per second with the GFX 100. Not to forget the 50R with the 23mm f4. And just at that point, one of the jets from Williamtown flew past. And again, I thought, well, it might be an idea. I only managed to reel off one shot. The new focus nailed it straight away. And even just 
open, cropping the picture down. You can see there's a, a lot of detail there. So the, that's really the story. The, uh, the GFX uh, three cameras, unbelievable picture quality, whether you use the 100, the 50S or the 50R. Uh, we've done, uh, I think, a tremendous job on the firmware. Certainly, it's a, it's a massive uh, firmware release three cameras at once and substantial improvements to them all. And that's why I guess at Fujifilm, we never stop improving the future. So that's my little bit, my little blurb on the uh, GFX cameras. I suppose we can open it up to questions now. Wonderful, thank you, Warwick. Okay, so we have, um, the first question is from Alan. Um, Thanks, thanks guys for your questions so far. Um, feel free to ask if you... Thanks guys for your questions so far. Feel free to ask if you, if you have any questions. Um, so Alan Bevan has asked, um, so Capture One thumbnails um, no longer seem to be working since the new firmware update. Um, could that be something to do with the compressed option, perhaps, or uh, something I'd else? I'd say it, it, it possibly is, but uh, the the... The firmware, I, I think the firmware has made some substantial, substantial changes to the camera. So, um, given the fact that yeah, they've included that. Uh, in fact, I haven't even had a chance to test all of the, the different uh, pictures on the, on Capture One yet. And I need to upgrade my Capture One. So, I would imagine. Can I get back to you on that? <laughs> I'll actually do do my upgrade tomorrow, <laughs> and uh, and try them out myself. Thanks, Was. Um, yeah, one thing we, we should ask, um, does, um, Alan, do you have um, the new Capture One 20 um, updated from oh, Capture yeah, One? Definitely, yeah, definitely yeah. not with 12. If you want yeah, to. it might not work with 12, potentially. Um, not sure on that right now. So we don't have a lot of questions. So let's, let's explore some of the features on the GFX 100. That's really easy. Yeah. yeah. yeah so let me, uh, We've actually got a GFX 100 um, yeah, hooked up well, to I, our system I, here I, so I we got, can... I don't know. Let's try this. I will try my magic system here. I've had a few questions about this recently. Um, as I've been going around stores and such like, uh, let's just switch to the presentation and uh, I'll show you some pictures. Okay, the mode switch. Uh, it's basically because the, the operation of the 100 is actually quite different from the 50S and the 50R. I mean, anyone that's used Fuji cameras will probably have no trouble with the 50R and the 50S. But there's been a few, uh, uh, raised eyebrows, I guess you'd say, over the uh, uh, operational system of the 100. It's fairly simple though when you actually get to see how it works. First up on the left hand side of the camera is the mode button or drive dial. Uh, you choose from this still, multi or movie. Uh, multi is for your multiple shot. Uh, it doesn't include continuous, it is your multiple exposures and things like that. Uh, still is pretty obvious and movies pretty obvious otherwise. The drive button is right in the middle. In fact, uh, you wouldn't believe it, but last week I had someone call me asking, they, they had the GFX 100 and couldn't find the drive button or selection in the menu. I said, uh oh, it's the, button, the round button there that says drive. Mm, it's made very <laughs> so, simple, almost, um, so, almost uh, like the XT4. Yeah. So almost. by pressing the drive button, you basically get all the different options that are available to you in the different modes, fairly simple there. So, and the modes are saved independently so that you don't have to readjust all your settings if you're setting things up for still and moving and so on and so forth. Uh, that drive button does allow uh, burst speed to be selected if you're in still mode. So I, I, I know a few people have uh, end up going to the multi mode and then are trying to find the continuous shooting. Continuous shooting is still part of the still side of it. Uh, now, on the other side of the camera, we have the program shutter aperture manual mode switch. And that's done by simply pressing this button here. And that top section uh, will toggle between your program and shutter priority mode. 
that's when the aperture is set to auto. So your aperture on your aperture ring on your lens will be set to the A. When it's not set to A, that same button will toggle between aperture priority and manual. Again, this is fairly simple when you get your head around it, very simple to use. I know some people seem to like, I know I've, you know, even today, reading an article about oh, how they wish we'd actually put a, a dial on there. But honestly, when you get used to this, it's, it's really not that difficult. So you can also assign features, these features to other function buttons as well. The other really the cool thing is the number of screens on the GFX 100. I mean, that you've got the top screen and this can be adjusted in various ways. You've got the bottom screen that can be customized. Uh, and you've also got your EVF and of course, your three-way tilt screen, which is a touch screen as well. The top subscreen, as I said, can be customized and you can actually change the modes by pressing the secondary LCD mode button here. And you can actually have your still information or movie information or virtual dials, or you can have histograms. Uh, and you can actually even swap the coloring so with the background light. Uh, on the rear subscreen, uh, you can actually change the settings here as well. And you can have a, a information set up like this or like this, or you can have your EV scale or even have histograms on the back. And what this really means is if you want to have completely information free screen or EVF, it's possible and have everything fitted on there. Now, of course, the camera has the typical metering modes, our multi center weighted spot and average, just as the other cameras do. And it is possible, just like the other cameras that we have for the X series, you can customize the, the camera using uh, the display back button. So if you give that a long press, it will actually show you a menu of all the different uh, buttons that can be changed and what the features that you can allocate them. The Q menu can also be customized. You've got 16 items there that you can move around and change and uh, there's a, a stack of uh, other features on there. You can also change the uh, touchscreen settings even. We've got 3D levels and histograms that can be brought up uh, in color on the EVF and the LCD, quite separate from the monochrome uh, histograms that will appear on any of the other screens. And for movie mode, here you can see uh, quite a substantial uh, bit of surface area or sensor area there in order to uh, shoot movies with. Yeah, now I'm getting a wave that we've got questions, haven't we? Was I waving? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do have a few questions. Thank you, Warwick. Um, yeah, as you can see, the GFX system is highly customizable um, in some nice little advanced ways. Um, yeah, nice to see a lot of familiar names in the, the chat on um, in Zoom and also on Facebook. Uh, thanks for joining everyone. Okay, um, we do have some questions. So we have a quick uh, question here from um, Hamid. Hey, buddy. Oh. How many shots can you get on a single charge on the 50R? Well, uh, in theory, about 400. <laughs> uh, it really depends how you use the camera, uh, to be honest. Um, I do... Uh, when I'm using the 50R, I often have that uh, hanging on my shoulder. I do a lot of street photography with that, and I do a lot of shooting from the hip. So the camera is on a lot of the time. And so I always make sure I have uh, some spare batteries. But e even though the batteries are bigger than the X-Series camera batteries, uh, it's, it's really not a big problem to take a, an extra couple of batteries along for that one. But uh, yeah, in theory, about 400. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Warwick. Um, we have, um, we've, we've had some more info from Alan regarding um, thumbnails in Capture One. Thanks, Alan, for the info. Um, I've, we've sent you an email already. Okay. We'll, we'll have to look into that for you and All get right. back to you on that one. Um, so we have, um, let's see, we have um, Graham has asked, how does the GFX 100 compare in low light to the 50 megapixel models um, over 1600 ISO? Oh. <sighs> I've got some pictures and I can't show them because they're not in this presentation. <laughs> um, yeah, well, look, I, I was always impressed with the, the, the 50R. Well, one advantage of having such a big sensor is they actually operate very well in low light. But I've got to say, yeah, the, the, the 100, uh, just, it, it definitely, it's, it's not just an edge, it's a lot more than an edge. The, 
For a start, the focus system is phase detection. So it's, uh, it's uh, using a, a different focus method. Uh, the other cameras, the 50S and the 50R use contrast detection. So it's gonna be a, a little bit slower while, and they have been proved with the, the firmware, but the GFX 100 is always gonna be that bit faster, I think. GFX 100 is, is very good in low light. Uh, I, it constantly surprises me uh, how, how well it focused in low light. I've done uh, a fair bit of uh, outdoors uh, shooting at night in various locations around the world and it's never let me down. And I'm actually quite excited to, to see that they've actually even improved its low light capability more with the firmware. So I'm actually quite eager to get out and uh, shoot some more of what I shoot. <laughs> Thanks, Watts. Um, we have um, lots more questions. Thanks, guys. Um, this is going to get interesting. So, um, Canal has asked, hey, guys, good to see you again. Good to see you again. Um, how many pictures does one have to take before they become a featured Fujifilm photographer? So, that's, there are many ways well, to answer that answer. question. I've shot about, oh, must be around about 50 million pictures now over <laughs> about, 18, 20 years, and I'm not a featured photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of the photos in your presentation are looking quite good. Well, I, 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 I might have te mine are always considered test shots because of my title, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never fair. Um, but um, yeah, so Kunal, um, if we're talking about um, official brand ambassadors, um, as in the, the ex photographers, um, that is. The, the number of photos is unable to be quantified. So typically we would work with people who they've, they've got experience in the industry. It's usually we've, we've become, um, they've become known to us through the industry. So they're, they're active in the um, photo or video industry. Um, they, they have a body of work that um, is interesting and that um, tells stories. Um, and um, so they, they would be someone that has their own sort of work and their own directions and someone that uh, well, Fujifilm... They're essentially a recognised photographer. Yeah, a recognised photographer um, who's, who's got proven abilities because they've been doing there's, related there's, work there's, and both parties benefit. There might so, be some options coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, yeah, um, it, it's a tricky question to answer because there's not, um, in, certainly in Australia and in most places, there's not um, a, a program um, that um, that one can apply to. So um, just just doing um, photo work, do good photo work. Um, definitely keeping on taking photos is always a great way to improve. Um, if, yeah, I'm, I could only repeat that it, I it suppose is a, yeah. it, it's it's a, it is it's it's a very difficult question uh, fortunately Neil and I don't have to uh, make decisions about that because uh, there are uh, so many good photographers out there you know both professional and amateur and uh, uh, I, I, I think though that you if you're shooting photos you've got to enjoy it it's worthwhile it's very rewarding and as I say to everyone you know, you're actually recording history and I think that's a really important thing so. thanks Watts. Um, we have a couple of questions from um, Max thank you Max um, so one of the questions um, he's wondering will it be possible to do 10-bit video internal capture maybe on um, a 50 megapixel model if not um, already the the 100 oh well the, yeah the 100 can do it um, at 4220 uh, onto a memory card. Um, I, I don't think that the, uh, the 50S and the 50R are, are set up hardware-wise to be able to do it, though. So, yeah, I mean, never say never, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Hard, hardware can be a limitation, and the processor on the 100 is a little bit stronger, you could oh, say. Oh, it's massively <laughs> stronger. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Um, the other question from Max um, is regarding uh, focus tracking in low light. Um, have you have you had a chance to test that much on the the GFX 100 and the 50 megapixel cameras? Is that was one of the features of the since updates? Since the firmware, yes. Uh, since the firmware, I wouldn't say um, 
in a photographic situation. I've done test shots, um, I had people move around and uh, I have a, a, a picture of someone uh, on a poster at home and I've waved the camera in front of it <laughs> and, and it seems to track quite, quite well there. Uh, certainly, the, the, there was no, no doubt that uh, all the cameras improved in their focus. I think the focus tracking and, and just, just the getting a focus lock, they, they've all improved. Excellent. Thank you, Max. Um, we have a question, a technical question from George Campen. Thank you, George. Uh, is there a way to set exposure compensation to one of the dials? Now, this would be on the GFX 100. It's set exposure compensation to one of the dials. Yeah, no, it's um, it's sort of a situation where you yeah. will you will press and hold one of the function buttons, yeah. which is assigned to exposure compensation, and as long as any of your exposure variables, so the shutter. ISO or aperture, as long as one of those is an auto, it can be controlled by exposure compensation. Yeah. So you press your exposure comp button, function button, and then at the same time, you can roll um, a command wheel, command dial, sorry, um, at the front or rear um, to adjust that exposure compensation. So because there's no dedicated exposure compensation dial, one must um, tell the camera that you want to adjust exposure compensation. Um, but there is the, um, yeah, so there's the front or rear dial, which you can use to adjust exposure compensation. And uh, does that just about cover that, Warwick? Do you well, think? That, that, yeah, on, uh, I'm just looking on the, actually, we could even press that button. <laughs> Glorious, okay, now we can, we can even show you this. Yeah, <laughs> so th this is the area that you're messing around with. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's possible to go into, uh, the the menu system and change the settings around swap the, the front and rear dials. Most people that seem to do that is because they they come from a Canon background. <laughs> the dial swapped around, but uh, yeah, does that does that work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that helps um, explain or clarify um, how that works. Um, okay, so uh, we have a question from Keith. Thank you, Keith. Um, will Fujifilm continue to support upgrades on the 50R? And is there any way you can email um, a copy of the third-party lens options? Um, third-party lenses, that is a loaded well, question. That's those, uh, um, those HC lenses. Is that what you mean? <laughs> well, I suppose so. Well, well, well one Lauer, of the options. Lauer make a lens, don't they? They do, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't Have we got a full list of third-party lenses i've i've certainly i've got all the fusion no. on hc the house <laughs> got HC, a big list um but ones that would have the gf mount on there i think we, we have quite a few but if you're talking about lenses that are specifically made to fit the the uh gfx camera there wouldn't be that many um via adapter um adapter rings and things you can put a whole wide range of lenses on there in fact the cameras even recognize uh, uh, 35 millimeter or full frame lenses uh, they, you can set that up automatically or manually depending on the mount that you use but uh, if you want to email email us or email us or the help desk uh, a question specific on exactly what you want i'm sure we can compile a list i've got a lot of information about third party stuff yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be too hard um, for us to yeah get back to you with that list of. Um, but of course, why would you use third-party lenses when you can use Fujinon lenses? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Or maybe you want a different aesthetic, or maybe you already have some other lenses and you want to take advantage of them yeah. of them on your system. Um, there is a large range of third-party lens mount adapters um, for GFX. There's three or four, or there's more brands than that that are doing um, autofocus adapters. Yes. Um, and there's plenty of um, manual adapters that don't feature any electronic contacts whatsoever. So if you've got, um, yeah, if you've got full frame lenses or any, yeah, any autofocus lenses, you can use those uh, autofocus lenses on your GFX camera um, with autofocus. Um, it may not be as fast as um, the native lenses, the native Fujinon lenses, um, but but it is an option that you can you can explore and play with. Uh, question. <laughs> Next question. Caught him by surprise there, I think. So, um, hi Anna. 
<laughs> we have one of our ex photographers um, in the in the meeting. Thanks for joining. Uh, we have a question um, from Peter Singer. How frequently should GFX cameras be serviced? Depends how often you use them, quite literally, and the circumstances under which you use them, as I discovered in Papua New Guinea. Um, it's amazing where moisture gets. You change the lens and bang. Um, uh, it's, it's really difficult to say. Um, uh, my X-T2, for instance, I, I had for, for years without it being serviced and it, it copped a, a real hammering. Um, the 50, uh, the GFX 50R, when I did the Papua New Guinea trip, I was only over there for a couple of weeks and uh, I had it serviced before I went because I wanted everything to be perfect. So I had the sensor cleaned and everything was spotless. And it, it needed a service when I got back. I mean, I was very careful uh, changing lenses and things like that, but the heat and humidity and the rain and there was just phenomenal. Um, in fact, you know, even leaving the hotel, I would actually, in the mornings, I would actually use the hairdryer to warm up the cameras before going outside because the, f the first day I went outside, it was like digital uh, steaming up of the lenses. So, um, it really does depend on how you use them and where you use them. I mean, if you uh, go to the car races and you change lenses, your camera probably needs a service, but uh, you might shoot a, you know, a dozen weddings and they might not need a service. So. Thanks, Was. Um, yeah, that's right. And um, yeah, if you have a big job coming up or a big trip coming up and it hasn't been checked out or you're not comfortable cleaning the sensor, um, yeah, that's a good time to send it into the service center to get it checked out. Who's um, comfortable cleaning the sensor? <laughs> me. Oh, God. When I thought I knew what I was doing. <laughs> I don't think I'll, I'll try, keep trying that. It takes me too many attempts to get it right. Um, it is tricky and it takes experience. Yeah, when, and yeah. when you see our text to it, yeah, it's just, you know, those guys down there are fantastic. Yeah. They make it look so easy that um, you just feel like you could do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, ooh, some good questions. Where will we go? Um, Ali has asked, yep. um, is it possible to have the shooting details shown on the back screen or through the EVF? Huh. Could you tell us about the info display? Let's um, um let's switch to the on the, the GFX 100 on and show the info display. I'm not sure if this is what you were looking for. Um, please let us know if if we missed the mark on this one. But um, yeah, you can have you've got the the sub monitor on top of the GFX 100, um, but on all three GFX cameras, you can have you can turn off the live view. Um, of what you're seeing so through the lens. Press the button. Yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, no, no, the, not that one, this one. <laughs> Whoop, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, yeah, the, this is basically just going through the display option. So it's your standard display. You can remove the information and then you can have your shooting information displayed. Now, when you actually play back files, it can also play back with all sorts of information displayed. With you histograms and stuff like that um, in shooting mode uh, there's different options there EVF only and uh, LCD only depending how you want to use it. Oh, yeah. is that is that what you want the, the different modes uh, or on the 100 of course you actually get to set up the top screen or the top sub screen and the rear sub screen and that can display various types of inform shooting information as well excellent thank you on the other cameras we, we did just, misinterpret yeah. the oh, question we, no, <laughs> yes yes um, but that's okay i think that's a that's a great feature um so what, what am i the, okay the question is when the camera is on auto um so auto exposure settings um is it possible to have the shooting details shown on the back screen or through the evf um so yes, by default, uh, your exposure, so your aperture, ISO, shutter speed, um, whether any of those are on auto, um, when you activate um, exposure lock, so which is usually a function that happens when you press the shutter release down halfway, um, that's when the camera meters what's going on 
and sets the auto shutter speed or aperture or ISO or all of the above, um, it will decide what to set that to and it will display those to you on the bottom of the screen. Um, can you give us a, a demo, Wallace, just I on the try. GFX? Yeah. <laughs> uh, on the GFX. So, so what are we doing? Getting a photo? Oh, look, it's, it's tracking your eyes yeah. quite Yeah, so specific. you'll see down, hey, down here. A test. Yeah, it's could you much better with glasses now? <laughs> <laughs> could you could you put on um, auto shutter speed or something like that? Yep, we can do that. Yeah. So while um, you're getting a nice behind the scenes view, lucky you guys. Oh, geez. Focus assist. Yeah. Come on. Great. I need my other glasses for this. I'll have to hold it further away. So he's in a yeah, so, shutter priority. So your aperture is on auto. So, so you can see, going, that's program mode. So yeah, so you'll see there's no shutter value shown while his while Warwick yeah, is not when you, pressing the shutter release. See, so 26, 26th same, of a second. second. Yeah. So while, while you're holding the shutter release down, the, the camera is metering the exposure. And um, yeah, showing you what uh, settings it shows um, from auto, um, and it will do that for all your exposure settings. Yeah. So we're showing you ISO, your aperture, yeah. and your shutter speed. Yeah, and if you use back button focus, um, or if you want to lock the exposure um, separately from the shutter release, you can turn off um, exposure locking from the shutter release altogether. Um, that's in your button dial settings where you can configure all sorts of uh, ways for your, the camera buttons to, to function, including the shutter release. You can remove autofocus from the shutter release. You can move exposure lock from the shutter release and you can put that on a button on the back of the camera or on the front of the camera so that you can uh, independently um, lock the exposure and um, yeah, then take photos and um, recompose and things like that um, with the exposure that you've locked. Um, on to the next question. So, um, Andrew Morgan. Hey, Andrew. Andrew has asked, um, Andrew is with Ted's from Canberra. Um, can the GFX 50R be powered or charged with the AC power cable that is used to power or charge the XH1? No. Needs a 15 volt adapter. XH1 is a nine volt adapter. Yes, sorry, Andrew. Um, th there is a separate um, power adapter that goes from mains power um, to the, the GFX cameras. It's a 15 volt one. Um, the GFX 50R, now can you, but can you power R, that? You've got no, you've, uh, got, uh, no way, of, uh, can't use the, have to use the AC adapter. Oh. Oh, I suppose we forgot. Yeah, we can uh, open up the bottom connector here, and you've got your AC adapter there, and uh, it will it will actually uh, run the camera quite successfully there. That's on that one. You don't get the uh, DC coupler as you would on the X range of cameras, so that's not an option. But as long as you've got a 15 volt DC, uh, sent a positive tap from memory. <laughs> Can you plug a, a power bank into the GFX yes. 50R to power it? Yeah. yeah. If you've got the right adapters, yeah, no, no problem. In fact, um, yeah, one guy no, did a, a, uh, had the 50S uh, and did a trip around Australia and actually charged the, everything via a solar charger. So. Actually, yeah, um, Warwick, what I'll do, is I've got a, a power bank um, with the power delivery function so it can actually supply power. Oh. Um, so we, let's- what, what voltage is it? <laughs> I don't know the voltage, but it's, um, but yeah, it is strong enough to supply power to the camera. So I'll just grab that from my bag. Um, Meanwhile, can you, yeah, we've got another question from Manuel. Um, how can I control motion blur uh, on a moving subject on the GFX 100? Um, so work, I think you had a photo of a guy with a couple of horses. Oh yeah. That was shot in, uh, in Petra actually in Jordan. And uh, well, I just ensured the shutter speed was high enough to freeze the, the motion. I was actually pretty lucky because I, I didn't want to go down the, uh, the track of setting such a high shutter speed that all movement would be blurred. And I got 
luckily everything I wanted. So uh, I think we're shooting around about uh, eight hundredth of a second and panning. Uh, it, it, by the time the guy was in front of me, it was actually very quick. So we got a lot of uh, movement from the horse's legs, and his, but uh, you'll actually see the horse, the rider, and such like everything's crystal clear. Um, but it's a case of adjusting the uh, shutter speed to your subject. Um, generally, if I was panning even uh, a, a car driving past or a motorcycle or something, not at the races, um, you know, probably around about 60th of a second. But if I wanted to freeze that action, yeah, I'd be uh, probably been around a thousandth, two thousandth of a second, or even higher. Certainly, if you go to the supercar races, you're going to, and you want to freeze the car, then you're going to need to be a lot higher than that. Thanks for answering that, Warwick, while I scrambled around with my bag and finding a cable um, and all that sort of thing. Um, Warwick, um, Hamid has asked, uh, what is your favorite GFX lens for landscapes, please, sir? Oh, for landscapes? Mm. Look, my, my favorite GFX lens is the 45. <laughs> the GF45 is magnificent. But uh, uh, I would probably say most of the lenses, are, the, the lenses I use most is actually the, the 45 and believe it or not, the, the 32 to 64. So if I've done landscape, it's generally on the 32 to 64. However, I'd have to say most people I know using uh, the GFX and are doing landscape will be using the 23 mil. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a beautiful lens. Uh, it adds a nice depth uh, to the pictures. And uh, that's probably the lens that uh, I'd recommend. Uh, as a as a landscape lens, but I certainly don't have a, a problem with using the 32 to 64. It's a, it's a very very versatile lens. Um, but as I said, my favourite overall, and you could probably still use it for landscapes, the 45. Thanks, Warwick. Um, Peter Singer and um, and George Campen. Ah, oh, couple of people. Excellent. Um, <laughs> can one of my Fuji cameras be used on Mac instead of my normal webcam? Um, well, yes, oh. in, at some <laughs> point in July, <laughs> Fujifilm is releasing um, Fujifilm X webcam uh, for Mac. Um, it was originally released only for, for Windows, um, but um, yeah, much to our pleasant um, surprise, uh, we, we are coming out with a Mac version soon. So um, if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, uh, you will be sure to get a notification in your feed uh, when we post uh, when that yeah. comes out, we'll, we'll be on that to let everyone know the good news. Well, in the meantime, uh, what I have used uh, uh, is actually the, uh, the Blackmagic A10 Mini, uh, but for something portable, there's the uh, Elgato 4K. There's also the Camera Kazi. Uh, uh, I have actually have one of those. They're quite a neat little HDMI switch or capture card, as they call them. Uh, you can uh, use the the camera in that way. One thing I would say is just beware if you're using the camera for long periods of time, uh, it's probably best if you can avoid shooting 4K. Uh, we're actually uh, shooting 4K and downsizing it to 1080p at the moment, but uh, the cameras will, will eventually shoot through the battery, so it's definitely worthwhile having uh, a, a AC power adapter available for that as well. Warwick, we have a very special question for you uh -oh. tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, Daniela, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm probably not. Um, hi, Mr. Williams. I would like to know where I can buy Fujifilm cameras in Bergamo, Italy. Sorry? Thank you. In where? In Bergamo. 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 Ber <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't oh, know yeah, how long yeah, I should roll my eyes for. Bergamo. Uh, <laughs> uh, well... Um, oddly enough, I know the answer to this one, <laughs> having spent some time over In Bergamo is a province in northern Italy near Milano, and uh, actually if you're in Bergamo, I think there's a fantastic camera store in a little town called Albano Sant'Alessandro in Via Papa Giovanni uh, 23rd Street, I think it is, uh, FC Photo Furniture. Uh, it's a fantastic camera store. You hardly even know it's there. Find the florist in Albano and across the road is a block of flats and underneath that block of flats is the most wonderful camera store that has 
basically, if you can think of it, they've got it. <laughs> so, and seriously, someone asked that question. Well, well, I hope you enjoy finding your Fuji camera in uh, Albana Santo Alessandro. Well, that was most unexpected. <laughs> Thank you, Warwick. I've actually been there. <laughs> <laughs> who, would, who would have thought? Wow. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, um, falling from Italy. Yeah, yeah. Wow. International audience tonight. Oh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> um, so Anastasia Wilmington. So, oh, I've said that name so many times I shouldn't have. Sorry. <laughs> Anastasia Wilmington has asked, um, when could we possibly expect the release of the GF 80 millimeter F 1.7? Uh, I, as far as I'm aware, that's next year. But that, and that, now, I'm only saying that from the roadmap that Fujifilm released uh, earlier this year, I think it was. That's that's correct. Yeah, it's on the roadmap for um, 2021. Yeah. I mean, so, it's an exciting lens. It, you know, F1.7 is going to be the biggest aperture medium format lens. So, uh, yeah, roll on 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, that, that should be very exciting. Um, Autofocus lens. But uh, uh, before yeah. then, we've got the 30 mil coming out. So, yeah. Very nice little lens, which will be appearing this year. Thanks everyone for your questions. Um, we will have to wrap up um, within a few minutes. Um, this has been fun. Wish we could go on for a couple hours. Um, I will try to quickly get a couple of questions. So I'm currently being fed a question right now. Um, questions we don't get to, uh, we will um, we will post answers um, in the in the we will post answers on the on the Facebook um, chat for the video. Um, so if you want to check that out on our Facebook page, um, we will post those answers. Um, so we'll put your name in it. So for example, hi Nazmala, um, and we'll post the answer to your question. So for the last question, um, Rick has asked, is there a noticeable difference between the GFX um, 50 and 100? So I assume that's in terms of image quality. So the, the GFX 50, 50S and 50R, um, not a back illuminated sensor, the GFX 100 is. Um, Warwick, what are your thoughts on this? Um, sorry, what? what was, is I, there I, a notice, noticeable difference between yes, the well, GFX 50 cameras and uh, 100? Well, uh, tough question. I mean, it, it, it is, I mean, look, um, one, I, one of the differences. A, just a, a, I mean, at 100 megapixels, you've got a lot more depth. Uh, it's probably a bit remiss of me. I, I've done a lot of shots, haven't done a, uh, a huge amount of, I suppose, comparisons because I always expect, I suppose, the X, GFX 100 to be a lot, a lot higher res. Mainly image quality based. I, I, I don't see yeah. a huge uh, difference in the actual image quality. It's really the performance on the GFX 100, both in your operational performance, uh, processing performance. Uh, it probably is a little bit better uh, noise-wise than uh, the 50R. Uh, it, it benefits from, I suppose, having a more powerful processor. But, uh, oh, okay, uh, even, I'm probably a bit spoiled because, you know, if I pick up a medium format, what do I pick up? I can go and get the GFX 100, or, and I inevitably do. Um, but uh, last weekend, going up the coast to photograph the whales, uh, you know, taking all three cameras and actually using the, the S and the R again. I mean, the S, I, I was surprised how, how great that performed. It's, you know, a, you know, as I say, I'm probably a little bit spoiled having access to so many cameras and all the lenses and such like, but uh, Picking up the S and and it definitely it's probably the one I noticed the biggest changes with uh, in speed of operation and, and focus uh, ability, but uh, I found the the 50s is uh, almost like a new camera with the new firmware. Uh, looking at the pictures after that, I'm just sort of going through them in my head because we shot multiple pictures, a lot more than I have, far more than I've shown tonight. Um, yeah, I was just thinking of cropping some of the 50S shots and comparing to the, the 100. Well, obviously, you can crop a lot further with the 100. The, the quality held together really well on the, the 50S. Uh, 
we did a lot more landscape work, I guess, with the 50R at that stage that had the 23 mil on it. Uh, but uh, the detail is there. So uh, I would say at the end of the day, uh, you, you, if you really want to split hairs, probably the 100 will be just a, you know, a little bit better, but you're probably judging that on the resolution side. Uh, either way, all three cameras have tremendous micro transition detail and tremendous detail. And uh, if you've seen some of the portrait shots that have been done with the 50S, even in the early days, they're just absolutely phenomenal. It's like you're able to talk to the person. So uh, whichever camera you were, were looking at, I don't think you'd be disappointed in the detail. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Warwick. Thanks, everybody. We're going to wrap it up there, wrap it up on a nice high note. Um, we will have more live streams um, coming to you soon. Um, we are working on, a, on, on things. Um, and, yeah, we have a lot of fun doing this. Um, we like getting your questions, interacting with you guys, um, and, yeah, just getting your thoughts and um, sharing bits of knowledge with you. Um, I do have to say, with... Um, supplying power to the GFX 50R. Unfortunately, the GFX 50R and GFX 50S, the, um, the, the only way to power them with, aside from the battery is by using the, that 15, um, 15 volt power adapter. Um, they don't um, take power through USB, unfortunately. But the, the GFX 100, because it does everything, um, it can take power through USB, um, through USB-C. So if you have power banks, you can supply power to the camera while the camera is switched off that will charge the battery up um, or if the power bank is uh, powerful enough or one of the power delivery specifications um, and power banks um, while that power bank is plugged in or while you have a for example a macbook or a laptop usb-c charger plugged into the camera while the camera's on um, you actually won't notice a de decrease in the battery drain because um, that power source would be supplying power to the camera um, it doesn't replace the need for the battery. You still need a battery in the camera, um, but it, it simply keeps things going for a longer period of time. Obviously, you can put a power bank in your pocket so you can be out shooting um, while supplying power to the camera. So that's, um, yeah, last little bit of tip. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, hope to see you next time and have a great night. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye -bye. Cheers.